Hi, welcome to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. Today we're going to be working on our chip and dip basket. Your material and cut pattern for this basket is as follows. From 3 quarter inch flat, you will need to cut 4 pieces 27 inches long. You'll need quarter inch flat, cut 8 pieces 23 inches long. From quarter inch flat also, cut 16 pieces 12 inches long. You will also need number 3 round for your weavers, 5 8 inch flat oval for your rim, seagrass for a filler, and quarter inch flat for your lashing. To get right into the basket, the first part is laid out in spoke fashion, and we're going to take our 3 quarter inch pieces. Now I've already marked the centers. The centers need to be marked on the wrong side. With the wrong side facing up, I'm going to lay my first piece down vertically like this, and this I have marked SS at the top. That indicates it's my starting spoke. My next one goes horizontal. Whoops, just a second here. Take your, your quarter inch pieces that are cut 23 inches long, and you're going to lay it right, line up your centers. I've marked my centers. Lay it right on top of that piece. Now lay your horizontal one, and again, line up your centers. Then spoke fashion, I'm going to lay this crossed here. And my final fourth one goes right there. Now, taking a piece of your number three round reed, we're going to crimp it, crimp it off center. And that's so that it will bend without breaking. And I have two different end lengths so that when we get around twining, we don't end at the same spot for both ends. Loop it on our starting spoke. Bring the left one, goes around the next spoke, and then this becomes my left one. It's going around the next spoke, and continue this pattern all the way around. You can gently spin this. If you kind of hold the middle, it'll make it a little bit easier for you. Remember that this first row is the most important row. It has to be nice and round and even, evenly spaced. So when I get back to where I began, I'm going to stop and go back and look at that piece and make sure. Do any adjustments that needs to be done. Make sure it's just nice and round. And you don't have to measure. You can kind of eyeball. Continue on twining for four rows. And that's what I've got on our next step. I've already twined this one for the four rows. I'm back up to my starting spoke. Takes me a minute to get set up here. This is my starting spoke. I've already twined on that, so I've actually started my fifth row. Now, taking your next pieces, find one here with a center already marked, and I'm going to line that piece up with the centers here in the middle, and I'm going to twine in this new piece. Twine in my existing piece that has the three-quarter inch on it. Lay out another piece. Remember, my right, your right sides are going to be up. Pardon me, your wrong sides are up. The rough side are up. And twine my next one. I'm going to continue in this pattern all the way around the basket. Then I'm going to do, oh, I need to do that real quick for you. I am going to line these all up. And I'm going to do a total of three rows. And I'm going to work a little bit faster so I can hurry up and get this done and get on to the next step. I have an end of a piece that is getting in the way here, so simply come in here and snip that out. I didn't cut it real short, just enough to get it out of my way. I like to do my final trimming when I get done. And this is going to tangle as I work, so I have to stop every once in a while and untangle it. Now, as I come around this way, I'm going to catch the tails of the four spokes that I've just added. Make sure I catch them in there. And I catch my three-quarter inch one in. Oh, it's getting tangled on me. I'm trying to do this quickly. Always taking the left one. I need to stop and untangle here. 
I'm always taking that left one over. How much easier it is to do when you just take a minute to untangle. Trying to keep everything lined up. If they slip off, just line them back up. Let's see. Almost to the end of my second row. I'm going to just go a little bit quicker here to get this part done. Then I get to the upsetting of the basket as soon as this part's done. I'm going to upset the center and build the center of our basket next. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, I have two rows done here, but what I'm going to do is stop. You do three. That's important you do three. Then you're going to come in here and I'll show you how to end it. When you get back, when you have done your three rows and you're back to where you started, take this piece here, cut off your long lengths, and put a crimp on it so you can bend it without breaking it. Cut it down just a little ways, maybe it down the length of three rows. Insert a knitting needle or something sharp and all will work. And slide that in there. Bring this one over. And let's crimp it first. We're going to do the same thing. And bend it. Now remember I have three rows here. I've kind of cheated a little bit on this one and only did two for time's sake. But you're going to do three and I'm going to insert that end right down in there. If it gives you a hard time, you can use your needle nose and you can pull it through that way. Now this obviously is too long so just come in here and snip that off. Now you need to upset all of your quarter inch spokes. And that includes the ones that are laying on top of your three quarter inch piece. Remember upsetting them is bending them. Bring, bring them up and bend them. Don't worry about them breaking. They're nice and wet. They're not going to break. They may crack a little, but that won't hurt anything. Taking another piece of your number three round. Again, I'm going to crimp it off center. So I have two different end lengths. Starting anywhere, I'm going to place this around a spoke and I'm going to twine in my next spoke next to it. It slipped off. There we go. Now I'm doing the same twining that I did before. It just seems a little different because I'm working from the side. And I'm going to do my first row will probably be your most difficult to do because you have to bring this spoke up and catch it in there. So what you're going to do is go ahead and twine this up for 12 rows. Twine it all the way around, catch all these pieces up, twine it for a total of 12 rows. When you get to that part, this is what you should look like. Oops, I'm a little bit tangled here. Okay, I have twined my 12 rows up, and this is what I look like. I'm simply going to cut off my tails here, take this one and put it inside, and take this one over here and put it inside. So they're going in two different spots, but they're resting inside. Now I'm going to do the top braid. Coming up here, about one inch, I am going to just bend it to the right and it's going to weave behind the next spoke, in front of the next, and behind the next, and out. And again, I'm going to bend this one about an inch. I'm trying to work this on the side so you can see what I'm doing. Behind the first, in front of the second, and behind the third, and back to the outside. Continue working this pattern, and I'm going to pick up speed here and work it all the way around the basket. Bending it first, putting like an angle on it, behind the first, front of the second, behind the third, and back out. This is just a real quick border to do, and it's kind of fancy. I thought it made the chip and dip basket a little bit fancy. And by the way, this center part here, I made to fit a butter tub or a whip topping tub so that when you go to put your chip dip in there, of course, you don't have to put it right in the basket. That wouldn't work. You have to have something in there to line it. And when you start using 
using it for your chip and dips, you may also want to, you know, use the part where the chips go, put some paper towels in there. Depending on how greasy your chips are, you don't want that grease to pick up. Okay, now I'm here towards the end. This one I'm going in back of, just like we started, in front of the second, back here behind, and now I have to come out because that one's already folded down. On my next to the last one, I'm still going to follow the same pattern. Behind the first, in front of the second, it's bent down, so I have to tuck it in and bring it back out on the last. And then my last one, I'm going to have to bring it through the first one. I'm still going behind. Oh, can't see what I'm doing here. Okay, I was right. Then back in the middle here. I have my first one above it, and back out, and I'm going to be under those first three. Then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do my trim, and I'm going to trim this just a little bit over of the quarter inch spoke here, just a little bit past that, and you can do that all the way around. Now, turn the basket upside down, and now we're going to work with our right side up, so make sure the smooth side is up. What I've done on these short pieces that we cut, there are 16 of them. On eight of them, I have put a point, and I'm going to take a screwdriver or a to weaving tool, and on my quarter inch piece right here, I'm going to open this area up with my screwdriver right on top of that quarter inch spoke and insert that end, the pointed end, the tip end, right on top of there and continue around. Make sure that your right side is up on each one of these pieces. And, I can and I'm going to work this pattern all the way around right on top of that existing quarter inch spoke. Now you continue around and add all your spokes and for time's sake I'm just going to add these first few right here and then I'm going to come in here and get my quarter inch, or pardon me, my number three round reed. Again, I always start with that crimp, two different in lengths. Then starting anywhere, now you've got this done, okay? I'm cheating on time here. But you're going to loop this around that quarter inch spoke, and you're going to twine, catching in the new spokes, catching in the three quarter inch that's already there, and you're going to continue working this all the way around the basket. And I want you to do 15 rows of twining. Got that? 15 rows. Then I am up here on my next set. I have my 15 rows done. I'm back to where I started. Now, those other pieces that I had you cut, oops, I have to find them. Here they are. We're going to add them in here. And again, right side facing up. I'm going to just pull the spoke over gently. I have taken on these pieces, these 12 inch pieces, I have put a, a taper on them. Can you see that taper? And I'm going to insert that taper right down next to the existing quarter inch spoke. And this is going to double all my spokes. Pull it over a little bit. If you have trouble getting it in there, then you can use your screwdriver to help open up that spot or a knitting needle, that works good too. And insert all of these in here. I want you to continue on doing that. I know sometimes I have to hurry for time's sake, but there's a lot of steps in this basket. When you get them all in, let's assume you've already got them in, come across here with your twining, <coughs> divide them up a little bit, pardon me, and twine each piece in individually. So now that I have two spokes coming out of here, catch my three quarters, come around here and do these individually here. Take time if you have to, straighten them up, make sure they're not bulging or anything like that, and continue on. You're going to continue in this pattern for 15 inches, so our diameter across here is going to be 15 inches. I've already done that on the next step. Here I'm at my 15 inches. now. What I'm going to do is upset all of my spokes. I'm just going to give them a bend all the way around. 
Remember, this isn't going to hurt it. It's nice and wet. You may have to stop and soak your basket every once in a while because when you get these rows done, it does take time and it's going to start to dry out. Now I'm going to turn this up on its side and I'm going to start twining again. And as I work, I'm going to start bending these towards the middle. And I'm going to uh, just continue twining, working my sides up. I'm running out of a piece here. I wouldn't quickly go over how to add a piece. We haven't done that yet today. I'm taking another piece of my number three. I'm always ending on the left. If you're a right hand or a left hand weaver, you're going the other way, it'd be the opposite. But for right handed weavers, I'm always ending on the left. Pick up that piece, insert it down in there, and continue on twining. That's all there is to it. And yes, you end up with lots of these little tails sticking out, but we're going to go back and we're going to trim those when we get this basket done. Okay. I want you to continue working this around. And here I need to add a piece again. Work it around, work it up so your sides start coming up. And you're going to do that for 12 rows. There's 12 rows going up the side. After you have that part done, you're going to tuck and cut all the top parts in here. I have done that except on the two, so I can show you how to do that. This piece is too long, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to snip it off. I need to go down just a few rows. Sometimes I'll even put a point on it like that. Skip over your first maybe three rows. Open up this, the next few rows down there, bend it and tuck it in. You might have to do some adjustment. It should lay right on top of itself. Same thing with this one. I can see this is too long, so I'm going to come in here and cut it back. And I'm going to open up, skip my first three, open up my, my twining and slip that piece right down in there. Lay it on top of itself. Sometimes I have to come over here and scooch it over so it's, I know it's in there tight. Now we're going to put our rim on using our 5 8 inch flat oval. And this needs to soak for, oh, I would guess maybe 20 minutes to a half hour is a good time for it to soak. Taking a, a paring knife, you're going to come in here and you're going to whittle the top down. No, I've never cut myself. Not in this part anyway. And what I'm doing is flat oval is flat on the bottom and oval on the top. So I'm just taking down that oval part on the top because this is going to come around and lay upon itself and I don't want that bulk there. Come in here, starting anywhere. We're going to clamp this on. Work this around the basket. When I come to where I started, I'm going to overlap that three inches that I whittled off, and I'm going to just cut that off. And sometimes I come in here and just carefully trim this down so I don't have such a drop off with that reed. I'm going to repeat this step on the inside. Drop my reed over here, and we have to whittle this down again, about three inches. This is my overlap over here. I want to do my overlap on the opposite side. Flat side always faces the basket. Using the same clothespins, you can come in here and you're going to clamp this whole thing down. Now, on this one I chose to use the quarter inch flat. You could also use caning. Caning would be beautiful to use for the twining or for the lashing of this basket. Come in here and again cut that off. And I like to trim this down just a little bit. No doubt I will hear from somebody about cutting myself. Okay. <clears throat> now, I've used seagrass for the filler. That is going to rest right on top between my, on top of the basket between my inside and outside lashing. Work that all the way around. I have left this piece a little bit long on purpose because I like to come back when I get closer to those edges together and trim it then. Taking your quarter inch flat reed, I like to cut a point on the end. 
My right side is facing the basket. <clears throat> I'm working between my two overlaps. I don't want to be where they are. Come in here between your spokes. Here's my two uprights. Here's the inside rim and the basket. I'm going to come right in between that. Come up about five inches. Go underneath your filler and back to the outside between the basket and the rim on the outside. Come around here. I want three rows underneath the rim. So using my screwdriver, I'm going to go in between my third and fourth rows of twining and stick that back straight into the middle. I'm coming undone here. Take a second here. And now that I'm back to the middle, I'm going to repeat this step again. Up. I'm going in the same spot I was before and down. This time I'm going to leave that tail on the outside. <clears throat> now make sure that my seagrass is on top there. I have number five seagrass. If you use something smaller, you can use two rows of seagrass. I'm going to straighten this out. One reason I chose seagrass for this and not like a, like a paper filler is because I can wash this. If I get chips on it or dip on it, this basket can be washed. Come in through here. I'll get a little bit of a tangle here. Whoops, I'm going to pull it back out. Okay, let's do this again. I have a long piece of lashing here, long, the quarter inch, simply because I'm going to double lash this basket. Coming on top of the seagrass with my three rows underneath the rim, I'm going to pull it. Now, to save me time from straightening this out all the time, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to start the next piece. Come back and tighten up this piece. Work the lashing all the way around the rim. When you get back to where you start, you're going to turn around, to reverse it, go all the way back around again so that you have double lashed your rim. Remember, we end the rim the very same way that we started it. And pull this tight. As you work around, you want to make sure you pull it very tight. Sometimes what I'll do is I will pull it tight and take a close pin and put it on here, and that helps hold it. Okay, work your rim all the way around the basket, and then you'll end up with your chip and dip. Now, see, I did use a smaller seagrass on here, and so I used two rows there. So you can alter a pattern. I give you ideas. You take them from there and run with them. The basket that we're going to be working on next time that we meet is our hen basket. And I'll be telling you about that, and we'll be working on this one. And I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.